Hello and welcome to my next video on nucleic acids. This is usually counts as kind of its own separate topic. There will be a question on it in the exam probably. Nothing too big though. So, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. It's what makes up our genetic material in all our cells and most eukaryote. And it's, it's what codes for proteins which basically what drives life so very important now this is a nucleotide so if you have an amino acid which is a monomer of a protein or you have a monosaccharide which is a monomer of a polysaccharide this is a monomer of dna of a nucleic acid it's a nucleotide all nucleotides are made out of three bits a phosphate group, a sugar sugar group, and a nitrogenous base. Always call them nitrogenous bases, they're not just bases. The phosphate group's always the same. The sugar group depends on what the nucleic acid is. In DNA, it's deoxyribose sugar. And then nitrogenous bases. There are four in DNA. Thymine, cytosine, guanine, and adenine. And these are complementary with each other. So A is complementary to T, G is complementary to C. This is why they bond together. I'll show you how they do that later. But this is basically what a nucleotide is. RNA, very similar, almost identical, except its sugar is ribose and it's got nitrogenous bases, uracil, guanine, cytosine, and adenine. U instead of T, and U pairs with A. So this is a DNA molecule and well three three bases this will be enough to code for one amino acid so you have a backbone of phosphate the circle and the badly drawn pentagon is the is the um, is the deoxyribose sugar and you have phosphate sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar and then the nitrogen space connected to that now how two strands in DNA bond together is through complementary base pairing C with G, T with A and this works because C and G can both form three hydrogen bonds they've got three H's or OH's it's, it's generally H's which can bond together T and A have two hydrogen bonds which can bond together and so this is why you get complementary base pairings now also if you look at the backbone, the phosphate sugar backbone, on the left it goes sugar, um, sorry not sugar, it goes phos phosphate sugar pointing up, phosphate sugar pointing up, phosphate sugar pointing up. On the other side it is sugar pointing down phosphate, sugar pointing down phosphate, sugar pointing down phosphate. This is because as one strand goes up, the other goes down. They are anti-parallel. That's quite important. Also, there are two other classifications of these bases. Purines and pyrimidines. Pyrimidines just have one carbon ring. And pur purines have two. That's the only difference. Purines are adenine and guanine. Pyrimidines are thymine and uracil and cytosine i'll come on to well uracil is the other rna base now this means always one purine bonds to one pyrimidine so differences between dna and rna dna has two strands with the bases thymine adenine cytosine guanine and has the sugar deoxyribose RNA has one strand, the base is uracil, adenine, cytosine and guanine, and ribose sugar. Also, RNA is a slightly different 3D tertiary structure to what DNA has. Very slight difference. How DNA replicates. There are, this is often what you'll get for a big question. This is the hardest question you could ever get on an exam about nucleic acids. They never do hard ones. It's always the same sort of things. But um, this is what how replication undergoes four steps step one the helix unwinds so into two straight strands rather than a double helix it then unzips into individual strands and this caused the hydrogen bond break step two 
Both strands act as a template for free floating nucleotides to come and attach, yet again complementary. So if you have an open strand with the bases A, T, G, the nucleotides that will join to it will be T, A, C. Step three, the two strands are joined together at the bases by DNA polymerase an enzyme, the hydrogen bonds reform. Also the sugar phosphate backbone reforms and these are covalent bonds. Now this produces a semi-conservative DNA, that's step four. Semi-conservative means there's one old strand, one new strand. That's all it is. Now, I can't find anywhere in any textbook that actually talks about semi-conservative DNA, but the, I've seen a good 12 marks on the paper be about this, which I think is very unfair. So I'll explain roughly what it is. There are three, there have been three theories about how DNA replicates. Conservative, semi-conservative, dispersive. Dispersive is that you have little chunks, old and chunks new. So you'd have both strands would be old and new, but at one point, so if you have, let's say, protein A, all of protein A would be just the old strand, and then protein B would be all new strands. So it's kind of little sections like that. Conservative is when all of it's old. All of it's just, it's just reformed from old strands. And then you've got semi-conservative, one new, one old. Very simple. And here is well, some drawing. This is an experiment that is used to prove semi-conservative DNA. Right, these are four test tubes. Now, the way I'm actually going to tell you how this works, I'm using it from a mark scheme of the actual question, which I think is very bad. But what happens is there is nitrogen in DNA, and that's how you know the nucleotides form. They use nitrogen. And what this experiment it does is it puts DNA completely using a radioactive isotope of nitrogen 15. The DNA is then placed into a test tube of nitrogen 14, a lighter isotope. And what you can see is these little bands of colour are where the DNA has risen to. So 15 Nitrogen 15 will be lower down, it's heavier. And as you can see, it's going up. Now, if you had conservative DNA, none of it would move. None would move. It would just all be 15, nitrogen 15 all the way along, but it's not. And the first one you have nitrogen 15. In the second test tube, when all the original ones are nitrogen 15, all the new ones are nitrogen 14, you get a band. So half the DNA is nitrogen 14, half nitrogen 15 mixed together. You repeat the experiment again. This time you get half nitrogen 14 slash 15 mixed together and half nitrogen 14 only. Because remember you're still in just nitrogen 14 solution. So this is what you'd expect. And then if you do it a, th a third time, fourth time, fourth time, third time, you get you get 25% nitrogen 14 and 15 and 75% nitrogen 14 alone. This is because every time you're going in new new nucleotides are forming. Free floating nucleotides containing the nitrogen 14 isotope join with the old strands. So this proves semi-conservative because if you look at what's going on you'd expect one template strand one one template strand and one new strand complementary based pairings of the nucleotides and the data shows two isotopes in the molecule in the test tube 2 there are two isotopes one heavy one light and there are no molecules with just one isotope in test tube 2 so this this shows semi conservative dna and that's basically what you need to know as i say it's I, th I think it's very unfair this comes up. So, next, how what does DNA do? You have a gene. A gene is so something that will code for a protein. This protein will do a specific thing in the body. It might code for your eye colour or something. Proteins are made from amino acids. Three bases, or a triplet, code for one amino acid. Now, I'm going to explain roughly how this works. This is GCSE, though. 
in the nucleus, what happens is you the DNA helix unwinds, unzips, just like replication. Then mRNA, this is RNA, just called messenger RNA, will come and attach to it, and you get complementary base pairing. So you kind of get a rough template of the DNA molecule. This is transcription. The mRNA can fit into the nucleus because it's very small, one strand only. DNA can't get out of the nucleus through the nucleus pores because it's two strands. So RNA leaves and goes to a ribosome. It then attaches to the ribosome where it is read by tRNA, transfer RNA. This is now called translation. So tRNA reads mRNA and brings the correct amino acids to fit the triplets, creating a protein, which are joined together by peptide bonds. Now that is from GCSE B2, I believe, depending on which board you're doing, but that should be very um, good knowledge to you. If you don't remember that, go look back at GCSE, but it's not too bad. Some other things about the structure of DNA. Um, right, DNA is quite long, so a large amount of information can be stored. Also, since it is complementary, it means it's much less likely to make mistakes. Though mistakes can be made, this, there will be an enzyme going up and down the molecule, checking for mistakes to stop mutations, but still some can get through. The double helix structure of the molecule gives it stability, and but the hydrogen bonds between the two strands make it quite uneasy, quite easy to unzip, which is good. And I believe that is everything. Yep, I think that's everything in RNA. There really isn't much. And I will show you two questions now. And these are almost, well, these are basically, people keep asking me, you know, well, one person asked me, do some hard questions. And for RNA, this is really the hardest it can get. DNA and RNA, nucleic acids are pretty easy. I mean, they can be a bit complicated for the theory, but the question's never that hard. So, questions. Describe the structure of a DNA nucleotide. Give three structural differences between DNA and RNA. Moment to pause. Good. So, describe the structure of a DNA nucleotide. There's a phosphate group, deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Always best to give an example of a nitrogenous base. So, thymine, guanine, cytosine, adenine. Three structural differences between DNA and RNA. Now, in this answer I've given, is referring to RNA. But it's best to actually compare them. So say DNA has two strands, RNA is one. DNA has the base thymine, RNA has the base uracil. And DNA has the sugar deoxyribose, RNA has the sugar ribose. And that's it. A reasonably long video, it wasn't too bad. And conclusion. The monomer is a nucleotide, the polymer is a nucleic acid. You have DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA ribonucleic acid. DNA will replicate itself to create new versions and very simply what happens unwinds, unzips, hydrogen bonds break, free floating nucleotides find complementary base pairings on the new strand which is acting as a template, join to it, DNA polymerase join them all up as an enzyme and it winds up again as a semi-conservative DNA. And that is pretty much all you need to know. Now, here's a, um, well, kind of a collage of my pens, because my ink ran through the paper onto this one sheet I was using. And um, half my video seems to be ranting about pens, but yeah, as usual, running out of pens, that's why there are loads of different changes in colour. If you know me, I I don't do colour. I'm bl I do black. I do black colour in all my work, but uh, I had to use some colour this time. And this kind of smiley face is just to say thank you. I mean, three days I've been doing this. Well, less less than. And already I have 10 subscribers. I'm just, yep, 10 subscribers. I think it's 140 video views or something very, very near that, which is amazing. And three likes. It's just, wow, this is amazing. I'm so happy and I'm glad you know keep keep them coming you know ask tell your friends about me and most importantly tell me what you want I mean I'm getting people saying they want me to do biodiversity I did it 
um, why I'm doing nucleic acids because that's what someone else said that they wanted me to do. I'll probably do carbohydrates next. Even though, yeah, I'll probably do carbohydrates next. And yeah, so just tell me what you want. I'll even do some F two one one stuff. So the early exam or any chemistry AS OCR. Even though it's probably the same for AQA and Edexcel as well. Um, or AS Maths, I can do that as well. C1, C2 and S1, so that's the one I'm doing. I could even do AS Physics, but I'd rather not. <laughs> um, physics isn't my favourite subject. Um, but I still enjoy it, but yeah, Biology for me is my passion. And yeah, also, um, <laughs> if there's anything else you want me to do, I mean... I could even do a video just about who I am if you wanted that. I doubt you do, but anything, just, you know, if you want me to, you know, do any other sort of videos, I will. So, yeah, thanks for your support again, and, yeah, have fun. Goodbye.